Welcome back to the Church of Obelisk. Today we're doing a position 5 tier list. We'll look at which heroes are best to play in the hard support role in 727D. If you're a regular viewer of my stream at twitch.tv stroke you've probably seen me do a, a tier list for position 5 on my stream last week on Monday, I think. But uh, since then, I've uh, decided to move some of these heroes around. I've changed my mind on a couple of these heroes. So this is an updated version, also just like a more focused version as a prepared video here. But before we get into this, what is this list based on? Well, partially, of course, it's just my own opinion. But then it's also backed by data. So I've looked at win rates and pick rates on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, which uh, looks at pro level pub games as well as win rates here from uh, Dota buff looking primarily here in the highest bracket here in divine and immortal but i didn't just look at win rates and pick rates i also like used my own judgment so for example a hero like nature's prophet his win rate is kind of like lasses so that would probably put him more like c tier or maybe even d tier but he's a hero that's like very heavily skill reliant and a hero that uh, people often overestimate their own abilities. So I think that just sort of depresses the hero's win rate. If you actually know how to play the hero properly, I think he's quite decent. So that's why I put him into B tier here, despite the win rate saying otherwise. One last bit of important preamble before getting to the actual list is that if you're using this video to figure out uh, what kind of hero you want to play, that's great. I would generally recommend, you know, playing a hero in the S or A tier. Or perhaps in the B tier if you have a hero that you're already well familiar with. And probably avoid heroes in the C and D tier. But the most important thing really is that you focus on a small set of heroes. You don't want to have a huge hero pool. You don't want to play a different hero each week because you saw a YouTube video from someone telling you this hero is strong. No, it's much more important to actually play heroes that you're comfortable with. You're going to learn a lot more if you focus on a limited amount of heroes. Because if you just jump around from one hero to the next, you're so busy learning these hero-specific things that uh, you don't really have the mental wherewithal to actually improve your Dota fundamentals, which is the most important thing. So that's why it's important to stick to a small hero pool. And also that's a good way of actually boosting your MMR. What makes a strong position 5 hero? Well, first of all, it's the ability to get a lot done with very little. Position 5 heroes, of course, typically get the least farm, so they need to be able to contribute properly to their team, even without many items. Second important point is the ability to lane well. So you want to give your carrier a good start, so that's why typically good plus 5 heroes are strong laners. There are some plus 5 heroes that are not good at laning, but then they have to compensate for that by being good at other things. Third important factor is the ability of setting up kills. You want heroes that maybe with like a goal combined can actually get a kill on someone. You want heroes that uh, can disable opponents and thereby enable their cores to get out their DPS. So you want heroes that have strong single target abilities and allow you to gank people and you know do stuff around the map and generally speaking you need at least one of your two supports to have that ability if you have two supports that are kind of passive that can't really set up kills it can be quite a difficult to play the game and then number four you want heroes that are good at team fighting so team fighting is very important in the current meta Almost all this team that has the better team fights is going to win. So if you have good team for contribution from your five, that is a huge plus. So S stands for super strong. I just have two heroes in this tier. I have Bane and Phoenix. Now Bane is a very powerful laner. He's a hero that can do so well with very little gold. You just don't really need any items. You just like need like boots, a uh, stick, a wind lace, and you're basically set for the game. Obviously, it's nice to have extra items, but he's one of the heroes that can just do so much with almost no farm. He's 
of course, a very strong disabler. You have your Nightmare as a kind of spammable ability to uh, remove people from the fight temporarily. This is a uh, very strong laning ability. Brain Sap allows you to trade so well in lane. So he's one of the best laners. He can easily set up kills and just doesn't need any farm. The downside of Bane is that he can't really farm. So it's fine because you don't need to farm, but also if you're playing lower level games where people are just not good enough about pushing out lanes, Bane has to suffer a bit. So that's why if you look at uh, win rates, you see Bane doing really, really well in high MMR pubs, but then if you get to the lower levels, he's doing quite a bit worse. Like he's still fine at low level pubs, but he's not nearly as strong as he is at high levels. Also in pro games, as he was picked so much. That's just because in those games, the cores are just more efficient at farming. They're leaving less farm on the map, so there's just less farm for a position 5 to pick up. So it's less important to pick a 5 that can actually push waves and farm. Alright, Phoenix. Phoenix is a very powerful team fighter. His laning state is kind of meh. He's like can trade quite well, but he doesn't really have kill potential. He's an okay laner, but not great. He doesn't really set up kills. He is actually a little bit greedy. He needs some items to really shine. He needs some levels. But all of that is forgiven because he's just an amazing team fighter. This is one of the best team fighting heroes in the game. And if we just have this strong team fight contribution from a Phoenix, even on a fun Phoenix, it's just uh, really powerful. And also the fact that they buffed the level 1 Nova makes him much more viable as a 5. His winner is really high, and he's picked all the time in pub games. You know, this is 55% win rate being picked 20% of the time. That is the hallmark of an amazing hero. Let me get to the heroes who are above average. These are heroes you can always solidly pick, but they're not quite uh, the superstar category. First, we start with Chen, who's just a very solid hero right now. He has an excellent laning stage. He can kind of get kills around the map. It's a bit awkward because he's moving around with those creeps, but oftentimes, if you like Chen plus one, you can usually kill people depending on what kind of creeps you have, of course. And he's an excellent team fighter. He has all these uh, the healing with Hand of God and the Divine Favor. You typically tend to buy aura items, things like Mech, things like Vlad's. Uh, so we have excellent team work contribution. And he was a hero that can actually do reasonably well without farm, although he also appreciates having farm. But the good thing about Chen is he also farm quite fast by support standards. But Chen, of course, is a specialist hero. It's not a hero that you just pick up and start playing. It requires a lot of practice. Uh, if you want some guidance on there, obviously I have lots of uh, Chen videos on my channel to help you out, help you get started. I particularly recommend uh, that you watch the Chen micro guide, the guide to Chen creeps, and uh, the guide to late game Chen. Um, I'm going to put links to those three videos uh, down below. I'm not going to spend quite as much time on the, uh, these other heroes. Uh, Crystal Bane is just a very solid support. He's especially good in low level games, but still okay in high level pubs. He's a reasonably good laner these days. And she offers a lot of team contribution, obviously, with her aura. She's a pretty good team fighter. She has some pickup potential as well with those roots that she has and her slows. So, just an overall very solid support hero. Who kind of falls off a little bit in high level games, but it's still okay there. Ayu is kind of the opposite. He's good in high level games, and he's especially good if you're queuing together with friends. So if you're just solo queuing with Ayo, it's kind of difficult to make it work properly because it requires you to sort of adjust to your carries place while the carry also to adjust to you. Without proper communication, Ayo is a lot weaker. So I would recommend this only if you're queuing up with friends. But he has a high win rate in high level games and is picked all the time in pro games. So I'm putting him here in A tier. Then we have Ogre, who, like Crystal Maiden, is uh, very strong in low level pubs but still okay in high level pubs. He's obviously a strong laner, a hero that can do well without farm, but is still 
somewhat able to farm with his ignite especially if you take the ignite talent and if you go for minus you also actually farm really well and get lots of items but as a five uh, you might not want to do that probably most of the time you don't want to go for minus but in some games it's, it's all right and he's a hero that you can pick especially if you're doing up together with people who are higher level than you are so if you're like, uh, let's say you're like a 3k player, but you're doing up with a bunch of people who are like 4k or 5k, just pick an ogre, you're going to have good laning impact, and then you can just like run uh, behind your cores and uh, buff them with the bloodlust and provide a decent amount of value. And the fact that uh, you're kind of outskilled by most of your opponents uh, doesn't matter too much because you're an ogre. That's how we do! Pure skill! Oracle is a very solid all-around hero, good laner, very strong defensive support. The ability to dispel things from both allies and enemies is very powerful in a lot of matchups. So he's just a very powerful all-round uh, good support. You have Dream Protector, who really sort of changes the way the game is played because you can always repair your towers. So it forces your opponents to commit more deeply for pushes because if they don't finish off the tower, it's going to heal back up. He's also a very strong laner. He's excellent team fighter, a really solid hero. I actually had him in uh, S tier in my original uh, post 5 uh, tier list, but I've moved him down. I think he's not quite S level, but he's very strong, definitely. Undying, another very solid, strong hero. Excellent laner, excellent team fighter. He does lack Disable, so that's his big weakness. But uh, his laning prowess is enough to carry him into the A tier. I also had this guy at S tier. I moved him down a little bit here, but uh, he's definitely very strong. And he's especially powerful if you have some sort of uh, vulnerable, weak carry that kind of needs someone to babysit him. So if you're playing with, say, a Drow, Undying is excellent because... Drow is worried about being bullied, about being run at, but that is exactly what Undying is best against. You can also play him really well if you are playing an aggressive tri lane, because in some sort of tri versus tri situation, Undying is amazing. Then we have Venge, who is actually not a very good laner, but she's excellent in team fighting, the optimal pickup potential, especially the ability to uh, cancel BKB TPs with her um, swap is incredibly powerful so this is a hero that is especially good in certain combinations like uh, with Rao but uh, it's just in general offers a lot of value with her minus armor her disables her repositioning abilities so it's just a good all-around support which is why I'm putting her in A tier then we have the B tier, these are balanced heroes that are neither too strong nor too weak, they're just fine. First one here is Ancient Apparition, he's kind of a situational hero, so if you're playing against something like a Husker or an Alchemist, uh, this guy basically becomes S tier. But uh, he's good enough generically that it uh, makes it up to uh, the B tier rather than the situational C tier. Then we have Batrider, who's not usually played as a 5, but... Uh, Strength of Bat Rider is that you can play him in lots of different roles. Basically, anything except carry is uh, fine for Bat Rider. And as a 5, he's like fine. He's nothing spectacular, but he's okay. Disruptor is kind of a polarizing hero. He's a bit snowbally. If your team is doing well, he's gonna dominate because you're always getting that plus one kill with uh, your glimpse. But if the enemy team is stronger than you and the enemy team can just run at you, then Disruptor becomes very weak. And of course, you have great team fighting. This is a hero that doesn't really farm too well, but if you do get some farm, it's actually great because if you get an Aghanims, the Aghanims Static Storm is incredibly strong. So it means that uh, you mute items, which means that people can't just BKB out of your storm. If they BKB before, then still they're safe, but uh, if you storm them first, they can't use BKB, can't use any other items. So this is a very strong Aghanims. Also, if you get an Aghanims from Roshan at some point, uh, Disruptor is one of the best uh, heroes to, to give that to. I've made recently a video on position 1 Endless Titan. ET is a hero that does really well with some farm, but he's also a hero that's okay without farm. He's a very strong laner, he has good team fights even without items. 
So while I actually think ET is stronger in a higher farm priority, as like at least position four or ideally even like three or one, he's still a hero that does well without farm. So I'm putting him in B tier here. Enchantress is like a very strong laner, but other than that, her contribution is kind of lackluster. But she's so strong in laning that uh, she's still being picked a lot in pro games, so she's in the balance tier here. But her win rates are not that great, so she doesn't rise any higher than B. Enigma is a very greedy hero to pick as a 5. So what you want to do is with Enigma is you, know, you deny your own range creeps, and therefore your parry is going to have a decent laning stage, but you don't really contribute as much to laning stage as other heroes would, so... Typically, you want to do some jungling on the side. So, if you have a carry that can deal with losing some of that uh, support that you would usually get, Enigma can work quite well. Also, to make Enigma 5 work, you need a position 4 that is not as item dependent, that uh, can also like, initiate and has stuns and you know can, can make plays. So, if you have like a Clockwork as a 4 or a Spirit Breaker, some sort of hero like that, or an Earth Spirit, Enigma 5 can work quite well, and if you can get away with it, with this very greedy 5, it's obviously great, because it's a hero that farms quite well, has excellent team fighting. So, you want to pick this with a carry that needs less love at the start, so if you have like a carry, Lone Druid, for example, would be a good hero with, with that. He doesn't really need babysitting, so picking Enigma with him would be fine. But if you have a hero like, let's say, Spectre or Drow that needs your know, active babysitting, then you don't want to pick an Enigma. Shakira is a hero who is, does quite well in lower level pubs. In high level pubs, it's not quite as strong, which is why he's in B tier here. But uh, he's such a hero that is very straightforward, easy to, to play. It's also a hero that farms quite well, so in games where your cores are not properly pushing out the lanes, you can take over that job. Next hero is Cottle, decent laner, strong team fighter, has no stuns, which is a big downside, obviously, except for his ultimate, which is kind of a pseudo stun. But, you know, he's very strong in particular combinations. If you have like a Bristleback, for example, he can be quite powerful. But, you know, he's just like a, a fine hero. He's been nerfed a couple of times, which is why he's only B tier rather than higher up. But he's fine. We have Lich, who's a very straightforward, strong hero, another one of those that uh, gets uh, stronger the lower in tier you get. So, very powerful, straightforward hero. You have nukes, you have uh, slows, you have kind of pseudo stun with oh sinister God. gaze, you have a pretty high impact ultimate. This is a great hero if you want to learn how to play position 5. It's not too complicated to play him, so you can focus more on the fundamentals, uh, like warding and pulling and such. But at the top level, he's kind of lackluster, that's why he's only in uh, B tier here. I talked about Nature's Prophet at the start. He's a hero that does really well if you are a Nature's Prophet spammer, if you really dig down deep and learn all the ins and outs of this hero, you can excel with him. Then we have Nature's Prophet, we talked about at the start. He's a hero that has not very high win rates, but if you really dig down deep and knuckle down, learn this hero, play a lot of games with him, probably lose a lot of games with him, then he becomes really strong because he's so flexible. He's a hero that can be played in literally every role and he's decently strong in every role. He's a hero that is obviously a very strong laner. You have some you know, pickup potential because you can teleport everywhere. You have not the best team for contribution, like this is decent for team fighting, but the rest of his kit is not that good. You can farm quite well with him. He's a very versatile hero. You can play him a bit more greedy as a 5, or you can play him in a more sacrificial role, where it's uh, all about, you know, warding and curing your carriage lane and such. But the very flexibility of especially teleport just means that... Uh, in order to balance the hero, they kind of have to look at the high-level players because they don't want to balance the hero around sort of uh, bad Nature's Prophet players because then really strong NP players would just dominate everything. So that's why it has to have a low win rate. 
and like this complexity rating is total BS. Like this is not a, a two complexity hero. This is easily a three. This is one of the hardest heroes to play in the game. Venomancer is more of an offlaner, but he's decent uh, as a 5-2. He's kind of a bit greedy, but uh, if you can get away with it, uh, he can be quite powerful. Viper is kind of an unusual position 5 here, but it's actually not bad. So he's an excellent laner. He can really kill people at the start, and he can be incredibly annoying to the enemy offlaner and the uh, enemy to full support. And later on, his team fight contribution is not that great. He's more of a single target hero. But like, if you just go really ham in the lane, you trade your life against your opponent's life, and you allow your carry to get all sorts of kills, your carry is going to have a good time, and you're going to have a good time. Also, a hero that can push out lanes, can farm reasonably well. So, actually, do give this hero a try if you want to. He's quite decent as a 5 as well. Warlock uh, has not the highest win rate, but he's a strong team fighter. He's pretty solid. Lena as well, especially if you have more of a defensive hero like a Spectre. You get get her that extra sustain. And his team fight power is just rather by no one. But a powerful hero. I actually had him originally in A tier, but just based on his win rates, I can't really justify putting him any higher than B. Then we have Winter Viper, another hero similar to Ancient Apparition, who is S tier in particular matchups. Obviously, great against the hero like Meepo or Lycan, but he's strong enough just generically to put him to B tier. He's a pretty decent laner, strong defensive support, a good team fighter, and can do well with uh, little items. But he's also a hero that uh, can actually make decent use of items because. Nowadays, what even some people don't know is that you can still right-click people and do damage to them if the winter's cursed. So that's why some of the see winter have even played as a four or an off laner. And we have Witch Doctor, who's just kind of like an all-around decent hero, nothing special about him. He's just balanced. And then we get to the C traditional C tier. We have Abandon, who's just not particularly strong right now as a support. Ever since they nerfed the coil so much, she just doesn't really offer enough to play as a 5 most of the time. But you know, sometimes if that uh, shield dispel is important, you can still pick him. This is a strong dispel, so you can charge off stuns. What a lot of people don't know is that prototype works even when you're stunned. So let's say you and your carry get RP'd or Ravaged, you can just pop all time immediately, a Photic Shield you carry, and then he's also gonna be free, and then you can fight back. Willow, more of a 4, Dazzle, just a bit lackluster right now, he's good in certain combinations, like if you're playing with Huska for example, but then Huska is also uh, pretty rubbish right now, and anyway, I'd rather pick an Oracle in that uh, combination, but you know, Dazzle is not, it's not horrible, just situational. Grimstroke, kind of underwhelming right now. Same goes for Puck. Lion is not a very good laner and just not that strong right now. It doesn't have very high win rates. Uh, I would pick other heroes instead. Rubik, uh, great as a 4, as a 5, not so much. Shadow Demon, kind of lackluster. Then goes the Shadow Shaman. Also for Silencer. Like these heroes are not terrible, they're just like a bit underpowered right now, which is why they're down here. Snapfire is a great hero generally, but she does better with more farm, so you want to have her in like at least position 4. Even seen some um, post 2 Snapfire pop up, which is actually quite powerful. Her Aghanims is actually amazing. When we have the Aghanims, we can uh, eat one of our allies, and then we can spit them out at an incredibly uh, long distance. So. You look at that distance, that is so long. You got this incredibly powerful initiation tool. And it's especially strong, of course, if you can coordinate with people. But as a 5, you typically won't be able to get an Aghanim, so... Uh, that's just an important tool that you're lacking. And without farm, this hero is kind of a bit lackluster, which is why she's in C tier. But if you happen to pick up an Aghanim from uh, Roshan, say, uh, it's going to be quite powerful on a 5 snap fire. Visage is 
kind of a bit greedy to play him as a 5. He's still fine, but I'm just putting him here, down here in C tier. I would like to put him up higher, because I really like that hero, obviously, but um, the win rate just don't let me justify that move. Maybe have Clockwork is more of a 4, but can occasionally be better as a 5. He's just not great in that role, but like if you're drafting and you picked a clockwork early, but then you realize actually I need a different hero to be plus four, and then you can switch him over and it's he's gonna do okay. And then we have the D tier, D stands for don't pick. Like if you really, really love those heroes and you can't help yourself, fine, but uh, don't expect to do too well with these heroes. Bounty Hunter is just a bit too greedy. He doesn't do enough in the lane to justify him playing with a 5. And just generally is just not a very strong hero. Fudge is also generally a very weak hero. He's been buffed, but still he's very lackluster, especially as a 5. Queen of Pain. There was a time when she was uh, just so overpowered that she was good even as a 5, but that time is gone. She's still fine as a mid laner, but as a 5, uh, she's not really a thing. Then we have Skyrath, who again is more of a 4, and he just doesn't do enough. So don't pick this hero as a 5. Techies also receives a bunch of buffs, but uh, I don't think he's that strong. If you're gonna play him, play him as a 4, not as a 5. Win range again, too greedy for a 5, don't pick this as a, as a 5. She's a decent hero right now. Um, but you know, pick her as like at least position four, but more likely actually mid or off lane. What about the other heroes that are not visible here? Well, some of them certainly can be played as fives, like we've seen Pagna five and so on. But uh, with the nerf of the ward, it's not really that uh, big of a thing anymore. But certainly, it's occasionally you see things like Earthshaker as a five, but uh, generally these heroes tend to be not that good as fives. So I hope you found this video interesting and uh, perhaps helpful and um, maybe helping you decide which heroes to focus on because as I said, you know, don't go chasing after meta heroes. Focus on a small hero pool, really learn these heroes in depth, spam particular heroes, especially as a 5 because you're typically going to be picking first anyway. You might as well have just have one main hero and then like maybe two or three heroes to um, switch to if your hero gets banned, because repetition is really where you get good at Dota or really good at anything. I'll also do a tier list for the other roles, as well as there's a Meepo video coming up, so if you don't want to miss that, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, ring that bell. And also swing by my stream, come say hi and get your replays analyzed by me. And always willing, we'll see you there.